What's up guys, Quezzy here, bringing you guys another tutorial. This one is on text setup, and I believe I already have a tutorial similar to this. Um, but that was kind of different from how I do it now, and I think my renders a lot uh, now are a lot better than the ones I did back then when I made that tutorial, and that tutorial had some stupid name, but basically I'm going to show you how to make like your renders look bright so you can like see the actual render and like text part and everything and how you get like the nice bright outer glowing edges as you see here like on this Alexa background so first of all um, what you're gonna want to do is get your render and I'm gonna be using this Alexa render again and you're just gonna wanna put it in Photoshop in your in just like a new blank document I go uh, to the default like 1280 by 720 uh, set up, but uh, once you drag your render on, uh, you're just going to want to right click it and rasterize, and uh, then you're going to want to bring your CC on to this, and I have my CC already here, um, and if you want my CC, you can buy it from my designer store, or maybe you can get lucky and get some loser to send it to you, but that is not recommended. But uh, First of all, what I do, once I get to this stage, um, I duplicate the render, go to Filter, Filter Gallery, and then I go to Glowing Edges, and my settings are Edge Width width 1, Brightness 11, Smoothness 4. And I don't think I've touched those for like the past six months at all. Just kept it like that. So I believe these settings are pretty good. and. Um, <clears throat> then you're going to want to put that layer on linear dodge and then you're just going to bring down the opacity somewhere in like the 20s or 30s I don't like to have it too overwhelming so I'm probably going to drop it down even further maybe 17 that looks about good and uh, once you've done that you're going to want to select the two render layers um, and right click and merge layers so uh, once you've done that, that's basically all there is to that. You can just rename this now. Um, so I'm just going to name this Alexa. Crap. Shoot. Um, nope. Alright, there we go. Finally. Um, so once you do that, you can start adding um, some white overlays and some, uh, hopefully my Skype doesn't get away, and some textures and things. But what I like to do first is the overlays to make it brighter. So you're just going to select your brush, go down and select a color, get white, and go to your brush and make sure you're on just a default so soft brush. Hopefully I can get there without this freezing too much. And uh, so yeah, that's about good. And then. Um, what you're going to want to do is just go around where like the lettering is or if you have a logo just go around the logo and just pretty much outline it or not outline it but I guess inline it I don't know if that's actually a technical term I don't know but just go over it that makes more sense just yeah just go over it with the white brush put that on overlay and uh, you can bring down the opacity to whatever you want I'm just going to kind of keep it there I'm gonna make a new layer again. Make sure it's on uh, on a clip masking. Uh, click the paint bucket tool. Make sure I'm still in the white, and just click so it fills up everything. Then go back to overlay, and then just bring it down, just so the stuff it uh, so the uh, text isn't too white. It's kind of a light gray. And then um, what you're gonna want to do is make another layer. Make sure it's on clip masking, and then just go around the bottom parts and like around where there's like if you have pieces or stuff and stuff like I do here I have like oh I like these atom arrays and these uh, like pieces that are just like shattering around it and like reaper X and stuff you kinda wanna get that stuff just so you can see it a little better and that I don't want that on my logo or the letters and then also you wanna get like you want to get on like the insides because these are usually like for my light room at least this render is really dark um, so I have to put a lot of white overlays to make it bright so you can kind of see it and it gives that good look to it so I'm just gonna kinda 
fill this in here. One right down there. Right here. And uh, you can do this as much as you want, put it at whatever opacity. Usually for these darker spots, you can just leave it at 100 and then maybe duplicate it. Right click, create clip masking, and then just bring it down a little more. Just so some parts aren't white. And then uh, for my Lightroom, uh, the bottom always is really dark. So I have to go uh, across that a few times. So I'm just going to try to avoid the Reaper X because Reaper X looks pretty well pretty bright already. Um, so maybe like that. Get in the insides here. And yeah, okay, that should be good. Alright, so there we go. Uh, so now you got the render pretty well brained. Um, you can see right here this might be a little too bright and I kinda don't like that. So I'm just going to kind of select this layer and erase some parts of this so it's just not overwhelmingly right. I kind of like everything to be kind of similar in color. And um, as you can see, if you look at this render, um, these three letters look pretty good. This last letter looks good, but the X looks a little dark. So I'm just going to make another layer and just kind of overlay the darker spots of this. And this is the tricky part. Alright, that should be pretty good. Bring it down maybe. Alright, so there we go, that's pretty good. And uh, once I do um, my white overlays, I usually select the render and all the clip maskings and then go control G control G so it puts everything in a, a group and then you can name this whatever and then just open it back up um, and then click the render again <coughs> and then go to your uh, exclusive pack where your uh, textures are or just go to wherever your textures are and uh, this is my new V7 back that recently came out so I'm just gonna use the textures from here and I usually like to use metal ones because they're clean and they're not too grungy and overwhelming so I have a few that I uh, pick out that I like to use uh, this is one of them so I'm just gonna drag this over make sure it gets all the render make sure it's on overlay and then just bring down the opacity to about 15 14. 14 or 15 is pretty good. Um, and then I'm going to go back and then I have this other material or texture that I like to use. And um, after you experiment with your style and stuff, you'll figure out what textures look good and what textures don't look good. <clears throat> if you if you were going for like a clean type of render, I suggest using kind of like metalish ones like I use or just like cleaner looking textures. If you have a kind of grungier style, then use more grungy textures. Um, always make sure they're on overlay, because overlay gives them the nice look. This one I'm going to just drag down to about 20. And let's see if there's any others that I'd like to throw in. Um, these, these ones are all too grungy. Um, let's do this one. I like to use this one occasionally. Just to let it on here, give it some some nice pattering. All right, that looks pretty good. And uh, now here's the part that everyone always asks me about: is how I get the edges to glow. And I don't even think they glow, but I mean that's kind of like the word people use when they tell me so uh, basically you want to make a new layer I usually don't put it on overlay or on, on a clip masking I just kinda leave it out by itself and uh, I'm gonna select the brush click it click the size and make it two keep the soft brush however then uh, you're gonna wanna go down your color and pick the color that you you want the edges to be 
So for me, the color correction changes it no matter what, so I'm just going to put it on the default red. And then you're going to want to go to your pen tool, and you're just going to outline your text where you want the glow, so to say. Um, or so to speak, I don't, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, the glow, the outline, all that works. Uh, and you're just going to trace the letter, the, or in my case the letters, uh, you could be tracing a logo or whatever else you're making. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to finish this up real quick and come back one minute. Alright, so once you got everything pen tooled, what you're going to want to do is right click, go to stroke path, brush, stimulate pressure, make sure it's checked, and click OK. And it should, if you have your color up, it should make this outline. And you're just going to right click and hit delete path. And you get this outline, and I actually forgot about one thing that always happens to me. I'm going to go to my brush settings over here, click brush turn off smoothing and transfer there's always two selected that I always uncheck but they always seem to come back so I'm gonna unselect that try this again stroke okay right click delete and there you go and uh, if it's too dark or too bright you can just go you know, use control U and change the hue because the different color has a different uh, darkness and lightness so right here as you can see it makes it a lot brighter it makes it pop a lot more so I'm just going to leave it at that and turn the opacity down to about 85. And there you go. Uh, so basically that's my text setup. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. And from here all you have to do is close this folder and drag it over to your uh, background uh, PSD and get working on your background. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, leave some tutorial ideas in the description. And since I know I'm going to get a lot of questions asking what the font is the font is devil breeze all right hopefully no one asked me because I know someone will probably click the video see the font and just be like what font is that and comment it and hopefully one of you guys just calls them out on that because that'd be nice because I probably won't reply but yeah so thank you guys for watching and hope you enjoyed give me some more tutorial ideas love you guys boy